Okay, welcome to console coaching with awesome handwriting. This is gonna be a plat game, a buddy of mine who sent this clip in. Uh, just a disclaimer, he said uh, he was playing without sound, so there will be some tire kills that got on him where he did have fade available. So that would be the reason why he didn't fade. So we don't know the entire comp now, but it seems pretty well. So I'm gonna be looking at not just his Moira, but his overall uh, game sense. That's what I tend to look for are patterns of behavior and anything game sense related, especially uh, for low ranks, because it's usually the basics that you need to cover. Not so much the little tiny stuff that goes on, but there will be some of that as well that I'll be checking out. Make sure his Moira is getting the very efficient. Now I did see this match already, so I do have some things in mind that I'm going to be looking for to point out. All right, so I tend to like this uh, a damage orb at the very beginning. It is pretty good to help build ult charge faster. So the first thing that I notice here is there's a bit of pre-healing. Think of it like when you're first learning to play Roadhog. He has 600 HP, you get down to 500, so you're only 100 down, maybe even less than that, 550. And you use your breather to get back to 600 max. When you start playing Roadhog over time, you realize that's really an inefficient use of that ability. You really should wait until you're around 300 HP to try to get the most out of it. So Roadhogs, at least really good Roadhogs, get used to not having 600 HP all the time. So as a healer, especially with Moira, because she has a resource that needs to be filled, you kind of have to get used to sometimes your team is just going to be a, a little bit low and, and you don't want to just pre-heal like the way Mercy can. So as you can see here, Ryan is already in danger and we're at almost half a meter before, like he, because there was pre-healing. I want to try to avoid that as a Moira player. Now, if you can see, he's just dropped down to 12 health and his Brigitte is right here. I know it's easy for us to say like, oh, the, the secondary healer should be keeping an eye on that kind of thing. But you know, not everyone's perfect. You should be spamming, I need healing right now. But you do have your orb. But yeah, you need to spam that you need healing right now. Now you can see right here, he's already out of juice and the Zarya needs heals. So the other thing I noticed is that there is some there needs to be some better management of heals so the real cool thing about moira is that at chokes just take your healing orb and just throw it back and forth in between this choke and that way like you're talking about a total of 300 hp potential hp to heal your team at 75 heals per second at a max of 300 when you throw the, the healing orb directly at your team, it's only going to slow down for people who actually need heals. And as you can see, Zarya and Ryan are doing pretty good. Zarya is full, Ryan needs a little bit, but it's only gonna slow down for a second. Then once he's full, it's just gonna keep going. It's just gonna keep going. So that's 300 HP just wasted because you're only gonna he's only gonna get about 80 HP or maybe 100 out of that. So if you take, the orb and throw it in between these two walls because i know with with moira you're worried about the physics and that the the orb is just gonna you know bounce off this wall and then go into oblivion but when you got a lot of your teammates that are low and as long as the healing orb is actually healing it slows way down and you're gonna get to that 300 max pretty fast so it's probably it's gonna bounce once maybe twice in between the choke before it just disappears because it needs to spit out those heals at 75 heals per second. So you're gonna see that a lot where I just feel like you shouldn't be throwing the orb directly through your team all the time. And he's gonna be low on heal management because of that. The other thing is if you're throwing the healing orb in between the two walls in this choke, it gives Moira time to step up to ahead of the, the tanks a little bit, as long as you know, you're being mindful and not you know get hooked by a Roadhog and actually do damage on the enemy as they're coming in to refill your to refill this meter here while your orb 
takes over the healing for a few seconds. So that's a really nice way to use the healing orb is just let it do the healing and it gives you a chance to rebuild your meter. It's another reason why you shouldn't just throw it through your team and just potentially miss out on a lot of heals. Alright, it's a pretty good grab. Easy one fight. So in between fights, it's a really good habit to start thinking about your teammates' ultimates and the enemy's ultimates and see what is the enemy going to try to do next and what do you have to defend yourselves. So in between these fights, where you, you have a moment to think, try to think about the next move. Actually have a plan in your head. So again, you should be spamming, I need heals, I need heals, because Brigitte's going to be at the front lines with the tanks. She's not going to be in the back. Like, Zarya's probably going to be further, should be further back than Brigitte, if that makes any sense, so that Zarya can actually bubble someone. But Brigitte needs to be in the front, so she's not always going to see that you need heals. That was pretty unfortunate. Uh, that, was just, uh, that was just bad luck right there. He, yeah, it's to try to keep an eye on the trajectory of Diva Bomb, so that doesn't happen, but... Again, he's working with virtually no sound, so there's going to be a lot of uh, odd movements like that because uh, sound is, adds so much more awareness to the match and what's going on. Like that tire, like he, he just didn't hear it. So, And it's going to cost him a few times in this match, so he's fully aware that sound is, is pretty important. So it's not unheard of, you lose the first point. If you lose the first point, it's not a big deal. I mean... You held on to it for three minutes. They had a minute left before they actually capped it. Actually, we were talking 50 seconds. So that's still good. That's that's pretty good hold. Nothing to be upset about. So you want to try to hold on to Moira's damage orbs when you already have coalescence because the orb is good for the damage orb is good for picking off someone who's by themselves and is trapped in a room. But it's just that circumstance is kind of, not necessarily rare, but just hard to capitalize on. Because uh, they could just get out of the room, or just have a, a second or third teammate get in the room with them, which uh, further thins out that damage, because the, the damage orb does 50 damage per second, and it maxes out at 200. So it has the potential to kill a 200 HP target. But as soon as there's m more than one target, as soon as there's three people, that 50 damage splits. Like, they each get 50 damage, but it'll reach that 200 cap faster. So not much damage is going to happen. So that's why it's mostly used to gain ult charge rather than actually finish, uh, like, getting kills. You can use it to finish off low healths. So that's great. But when you already have a uh, Coalescence, when you already have your ultimate like that, try to save the... F try to do more of the healing orb. So that way, when you, you, you can use your primary damage and make sure that your meter is always full because your healing orbs taking and mitigating some of those heals. So, um, it didn't look like anyone else uh, had an ultimate to combo with the uh, Reinhardt. Uh, I also recommend, especially with this update, that you try to look at the hero screen a lot more to find out what your team's percentages are. Like, the difference between getting to plat and diamond and staying in diamond, this is what happened to me. I was stuck in plat for three or four seasons. And now, uh, then I broke into diamond, but then I would lose it very quickly. I dropped back into plat. And now I've reached a point where I don't think I could ever really truly drop into plat unless I go on like a really bad losing streak. But I, I really don't play after like three losses because then I'm, I know I'm already tilted. So I, I don't think I could really truly drop into plat. And that's because you learn more about ultimate economy. That's the difference. If you want to get into diamond and stay in diamond easily, Learn about ult usage. So you see the Reinhardt use Shatter. Um, if you were looking at the hero screen, you can tell if, if anyone has anything to follow up. If not, you have Coalescence. 
that is a pretty good follow-up. The thing I really like about Coalescence that a lot of people kind of underestimate it because it only does what, um, because the heals are only like 140 per second and the damage is 70. It's not a lot, but the thing about it is that it's un blockable. It is a far distant damage ability that is unblockable. Like the only thing is, is, is Zarya's bubble for a couple of seconds, right? But the, that's the only thing that can block this Diva Matrix, Rhine Shield, wins, any barriers whatsoever. So Moira can attack the enemy backline from the safety of her teammates backline and no one can do anything about it. You just have to take cover. That's a pretty powerful and underrated ability in my opinion. So, you know, yeah, if you're if your Ryan shatters like that, don't be afraid as long as you know what the other ults are, don't be afraid to follow up with coalescence. But if you do see someone who has an ultimate that might potentially use it and you got a feeling that they might follow up with earth shatter from it, then yeah, you may want to hold on to it. You kind of just have to read the battle and make that make your decision from that cuz you don't want to burn all your ultimates in one fight. Now look at that. That's a, that's a good example. He threw the orb to save the Zarya. He's, he's low on heals. And look at this orb. It gets smaller the more heals that it's going through. Like it, it gets smaller until it disappears. That's like pretty, almost its original size. So that's a lot of, that's a lot of potential heals just left on the shelf there. You throw them at your teammate. You gotta throw them in between. I'm terrible at drawing. So just try to find two walls, and as long as, again, as long as your teammates aren't, like, don't, don't worry about if they're not fully healed all the time, but if they're about half, they're between both of, like, say, your tanks, it's going to slow down the orb so much, it's going to bounce at least once, maybe twice on the second surface, and then it'll just disappear, you know, but if your tanks are barely low, they're not going to slow that orb down, and then it will bounce three four times until it finally bounces off into oblivion. So try to keep that in mind. Now, I, I kind of get the feeling that you use Coalescence because you are just low on heals and you have no other choice. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, you timed the fade wrong and uh, they caught you out in the open with that. So, um, in a game sense sort of way, uh, or type of focus is that, uh, you know, the, uh, even a bad player is going to get their ultimate at least once. That's why you should never really just try to, you don't want to react to what the enemy's doing. You want to try and preemptively predict it. If you react to it, like you don't, you don't think about the diva bomb and then you try to react to it. Well, it's already too late. You already wasted your fade. And now you're gonna get picked off from the bomb. So try to think about what they're trying to do, what ultimates they have. Always think about the enemy's ultimates. Moira's out of position, she should be punished for it. Now this, uh, I remember this specifically, this was, um, uh, Mercy's tend to do this a lot too, just because of her crazy mobility. They sacrifice their safe position to save a tank that got too aggressive. This is a crucial mistake that a lot of uh, main heals makes. And again, mostly like with uh, with mercies that, that do this, especially when they go for like a res in the middle of the enemy. It's a tough decision, I get it, between having to save your tank, potentially saving your tank and keeping him in the fight, or he goes down and now you don't have a main tank. But most of the time, don't allow his bad decision making to affect your gameplay so much that you also get picked off, which he does get picked off here because he wasn't able to save Ryan in time and he probably couldn't really save him. I mean, look how many enemies are around. He's got four enemies around and two of them are tanks. A single Moira cannot outheal all that damage because even the two tanks, it's a diva and a Roadhog. She's, he's not gonna outheal that. They basically get an extra free pick off of you because you tried to save the Rhine. And now, this is the biggest thing that happens in this match, 
and it's pretty subtle and a lot of low ranks don't really notice it but his team pretty much staggers and trickles in for most of this fight they don't really actually group up properly i think until towards the end when the spawn advantage simply forces them to group up so there's a lot of staggering right here and the enemy just breezes right on through to this checkpoint you can kind of see here that they're pretty scattered so the junk rat just got picked this is pretty crucial as well the now reaper just got picked off and guess what zarya does she fires the graviton oh and the rhine just died as well so there was absolutely no, no one to follow up on that grav so this is also something pretty crucial especially if you're a support player so um from a support role it's actually pretty easy it's uh, I think it's uh, more difficult from a DPS role, but tanks and supports I think have the easiest times really being able to pay attention to the kill feed. That's one of the things that I notice um, when it comes to low ranks, uh, they're, they're, there's kind of like an, a lack of awareness because of the lack of paying attention to the kill feed. So if you just watch the kill feed, there's not much more I can say about this other than that your team is continuously staggering and no one is taking charge and saying, hey, we need to group up or even spamming the group up thing. Especially if you're in such a key role like the main heals or the main tank, especially main tank. If you're just one of those roles, not necessarily DPS, nobody likes to listen to DPS, I don't think. <laughs> but, um, okay, so now they won this fight and they're, they're, they are starting to group up, but they have trouble finding their footing. But anyways, if you're a main tank or main heals and you're outside the spawn room and you're just saying group up, you have a very high chance of your team actually listening. But if they're already in the fight, if you catch them as they're spawning in and coming outside, you have a better chance than trying to say group up and expecting them to pull back. No one really pulls back at low ranks, but they will slow down as they're coming out of spawn. So someone needs to take charge and, and make sure that you guys are grouping up properly. There's another tire that you couldn't hear. So <laughs> I think it happens like three times. It's just it's it's this junk rat is just unstoppable in this match he's gotten like two or three triples so that's fine get that old charge you got it your goal is to get that coalescence as fast as possible i see zen's got the transcendence so you know you don't really don't have to heal as much so yeah there's just a constant stagger here that's just it, his team just never truly recovers from and that's usually what happens like uh again no one really takes charge and and really you have to be i'll take a what what wizard Chong actually said when i did that video on him you have to be convinced that grouping up will help you secure more wins you have to be convinced of it. Everyone just kind of brushes it off like, oh, it's it's not a big deal. We'll group up when we group up. It's not. But they just breeze right through the, to the second uh, point after Streets phase and then kind of breeze through to the end as well. I mean, his team won one fight out of that whole time. And that's not, I mean, you can improve individual skill and whatnot, whatnot and do little things. But the biggest thing for there was just the staggering. All right, so let's skip ahead here. So it's still a, it's still a pretty decent comp. So that means that uh, people do doesn't seem like anyone's tilting, and if they are, it's not that bad to where they're just picking all DPS. So that's good. So the team is still mentally ready to try to win. Stop here now. Um, I'm not sure why the duo queue has Orisa and Sombra as as the combo. They don't really combo that well. And double barrier, it's more like, um, in my opinion, and I could be wrong about this, the reason why you don't run double main tanks is because the main tanks usually dictate the the momentum of the fight, like how the fight goes and what your team is supposed to do. Ryan is a very aggressive tank. He wants to get into the fight, while Orisa likes to stay back and hold people at bay. That's to two totally different styles. Like If you think Winston and Ryan have totally different styles and Arisa and Ryan definitely have different styles as well and you don't and, and because they have such an impact on how the fight goes you don't want both of them you don't want two main tanks you want an off tank that supports what the main tank style is that's why we have the Ryan Zarya that's why we have the hog Arisa 
That's why we have the Diva Winston. Because those off tanks support what the main tank's trying to do. But essentially, you're basically asking each tank to do their job twice as well because there's really no backup. But still, things happen. It could be very successful and work for them. Now, I like the Mercy pick because you got the Pharah. She should be able to keep up with the heals. You have Bagrita still. Oh, that's rough. <laughs> I can't believe she got away with that. Oh, she's just putting a turret up, like, extra slow. She picks off the Mercy, oh man. So, uh, yeah. So you can see there, right in the kill feed, the Orisa went down. Was the, If you don't count the Mercy death, was technically the first one down. And I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, you're just going to see another repeat of the staggering. You know, as soon as the Mercy is the first one down, and your your team did not commit to the fight... Just go ahead and pull back. You know, I understand if you the fight is already broken out, you, there's a couple of the enemy low, and then your Mercy dies, and you're like, oh, should we stay in or see if we can get a pick? You know, that those decisions are, there's no real right answer. You kind of just see how the fight unfolds. But if you didn't commit to the fight and your Mercy got taken out first, just pull back. Just pull back and regroup. Just reset. So the Arisa didn't do that. She pushed in. Now you have the Rhine by himself and he's he's even having trouble getting to the to even the choke so genshi and farah took each other out so yeah the, the his team is just never truly whole and actually a diva would be nice because not only could she contest the high ground but she can help mitigate some of that junk rat damage because that junk rat has been doing work this entire match now this i remember this he does not get punished for this but going after the rhine like that the rhine is just too aggressive it's too aggressive. These are the decisions you have to kind of look at and, and make these decisions on the fly. Like, hey, this Ryan is too aggressive, so if he dies because he charged in too much, like, I'm not going to fly in and try to res him. You just have to make that decision because you know that if he dies and you go to res him and you end up getting taken out anyways, then you cost your team that fight, essentially. I know he played a part in it, but you did as well. You could have still recovered with the Orisa if the Ryan went down oh yeah this was this was so cheeky look she's just like waiting off to the side so um the other thing about this besides the staggering is that um because it doesn't uh, there's no one talking i don't see any voice comms at all so it's reactive play right now there is no plan like, the Symmetra is fl is hiding out in the building. Genji just went in with Dragon Blade behind them. Like, they're planning things out. His team is really just reacting, or at least trying to react to what the enemy's doing, and it's just not working out. You have to have a plan. You have to understand your win condition. So, if I were to ask you, what, uh, what ultimates combo right now that's on your team? What ultimates combo? It's not much. You got a damage buff from your Risa. You got the Shatter, which is crowd control. You got the Barrage that could take capitalize on the Shatter. You know, it's just all kind of clumsy. It's not all like really ideal. And then you know, because there's no communication, no one's backing anyone up. So the Arisa got taken out on the side while they were trying to do something on the right. It's just there's no plan. There's no chaos. I mean, there is chaos. Plenty of chaos. Um, but there's no synergy. I mean. And they're just, they're, they're basically, everyone's just playing like bots right now. So this is more of a, the, the cool thing about Mercy, uh, which, I, which I've come to respect her character more since all the changes and whatnot, is um, Mercy, kind of like Ryan, the low mechanical skill uh, heroes, frees up your mind. Oh, see, this <laughs> is so bad. And again, he can't hear the Junkrat that's right behind him. <laughs> so he just gets an easy pick. Oh my god. So um, the cool thing about them, the low mechanical skill heroes, is that it frees you up to read the battlefield. And um, especially if you're not used to reading the battle like that, and you're, you're still working on your game sense, these heroes are great to help build that game sense. Okay, so there's not much you could do about this, what I'm about to say, but again, you, now you have a Winston Ryan. Just, just awful. That's just not great. Winston's gonna be so mobile and Ryan is gonna be on the ground and sure you could say like oh but Winston could contest the high ground well D.Va can too and Winston wants to be in the back line 
and uh, against a decent team, Winston diving into the back line by himself is extremely risky. You could just have a D.Va follow him in. And Orion holding the payload by himself is also risky because he can't con he can't block from all angles. A second, an off tank that helps uh, get the other angles that he has trouble covering, that would help, like a D.Va or Zarya. Yeah, this guy's tires, like, He's not even jumping the tire. He's not even jumping it. They're very, very average tires. And he's just getting away with it. Oh, it's just feels bad, man. So I, I haven't really seen um, you bring up the hero screen at all. Like, I have no idea where your team's ults are. I, I don't, we don't know which one of their teammates or which one of the enemy is on fire, which means they're doing well, which most likely would be the Junkrat. Uh, but these, you want to watch the hero screen. Yeah, it's just a, just a slaughter from this point on, pretty much. And I don't really notice anything necessarily awful with the with the Lucio. Like it's, a, you're doing what Lucio's pretty much supposed to do. The only thing I would say is, um, try to be more deliberate with your boops. Like you're actually like wait to see, wait for Roadhog to hook someone, then boop him away. Or Ryan's tries to charge your Ryan and then boop him out of the way. You want to boop with with a purpose. All right, so that is uh, the first official episode of Console Coaching with Chit Chat. Uh, if you enjoy what you see, uh, there's an email link that you can copy down below. You can send me an email with the following instructions. So if you guys like this, please send those emails in and participate in this. If you enjoyed, be sure to share, like, and subscribe to the channel. My name is Chit, and I approve this message.